Hello, and welcome to a very, very special episode of Pixel Talk, our Halloween episode. And you may be noticing, something's different. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, Jake, Jake here did a very, like, he did a kind of a Doctor Who regeneration. Yeah. You know, something went down, and this is what he looks like now. No, yeah, I'm just kidding with you me. guys. He turned Asian. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a special guest today because Jake is on vacation, so my good friend Joel Viegas yep. is here. He got my last name right, guys. <laughs> it's not Villages. It's not Villages. I don't it's... remember who told me it was Villages, but villages? somebody told me it was Villages. I think one of our friends <laughs> told you it was Villages because like, the A and the E are switched, so it, it's Villages. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I didn't care. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here. Thank you for inviting me. Luke. For the second time. You were uh, a guest yeah. on our channel on our very second episode. Yeah. No, course. third episode. Yeah, oh. third episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where we did the Harry Potter mm -hmm. beam test. Yeah. And Every now we're here to talk about a different subject, a very Halloween y subject on this very day of Halloween. We're talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. The biggest game that you could ever think of on the YouTube verse. <laughs> <laughs> so. For the past two, almost two years, FNAF has been making waves as like this very mm -hmm. Cinderella story indie game that started out as this like very, very small game that was released on uh, PC this, on, on PC. I was I was thinking of the site, but it just escaped for me. But it doesn't yeah. matter. But it has turned into a huge, huge like like Big. multimedia franchise with it Big. being a book, being a movie. It has merch like this. Oh my gosh, there's so much. And then, like, online, it's a different thing. Like, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm wearing my Markiplier shirt because <laughs> obviously there's now an association between Markiplier and Five Nights at Freddy's. Because that's pretty much the game that shot him to the top. Because he was big uh -huh. before. He was big before. He had, like, around, like, 2 million subscribers before FNAF. And now he's up to 15 million. He's up to 15 million. That's crazy. I know, right? His diamond play button. He got a diamond play button, and he just broke it. Scott Cawthon. <laughs> Scott Cawthon. Gave him a diamond play button, pretty Essentially. Much. <laughs> <laughs> uh... And speaking of that, Scott Cawthon is like the cryotic of YouTube or of game designers because no one knows what he looks like. He just <laughs> I think keeps busting a, out those games. Yeah, there's a I think there's a picture of him floating around, but uh -huh. I'm, I can't for the life of me remember what he looks like. Okay, but in my mind he looks like his like avatar, of, like that little glowing pixel man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he looks like in FNAF world. <laughs> Were you doing like the... I was doing a dab. I was like, yeah. I was trying to cover it up. I was about to sneeze. <laughs> oh, true. Oh, true. That's how yeah, meme lords sneeze. Yeah. Oh, true. But anyways, we're not here to talk about the quality of games because mm -hmm. you, could, you got a million opinions on different games. And, mm -hmm. you know, whether you love them or hate them, the impact of the games just can't be denied. Mm -hmm. Because underneath the surface of the games, there's, like, this huge, like, iceberg mm -hmm. of a fan base. Yes. The fan base is really huge. And, like, there's subreddits, all based on the lore, trying to, like, decode every single little detail about every single game. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that was his intention at first, because, like, there was, mm -hmm. like, there was, like, little hints of, like, you know, mm -hmm. child murder going on in the first one, but he, mm -hmm. he knew to get, like, to, like, to get people, like, in, invested. Mm -hmm. He had to, like, include, like, this cryptic story to get people, like, theorizing and keep talking about it and keep it yeah. in the news. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's an incredible thing, because, mm -hmm. it, like, this game is, was bringing people together. Yeah, it was. I never really thought that there would be such a really big community on it. And I'm really glad that it's made a very big impact, on, especially on the internet. Yeah, you have, you have your own little uh, fandom story. <laughs> yeah, I did. So essentially, um, I think this is when Markiplier was a really was becoming a big deal. Um, he was already known as King of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> so ironically, when I was at Anime Central one year, I came in in this shirt. <laughs> And I was wearing a crown because I think one of the boots, they were giving out free crowns. I think it was Medieval Times. Yeah, it was a Medieval Times And crowns. then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to show up to the Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> cosplay photo shoot. And then I showed up. And then I was the only one in a Markiplier shirt. And apparently everyone thought I cosplayed Markiplier. And I was like, oh my god. 
What's they were happening? like, look, it's Markiplier, the king of Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, Get everyone over here. was like, yeah. And then I'll, here's a picture of it. It's on my Instagram if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Oh, what an like, incredible moment. Yeah, it was an incredible moment for sure. I was like, I didn't really intend to be Markiplier. I thought <laughs> other people were going to show up in their Markiplier Yeah, I shirts. was wondering if that was intentional or not. It wasn't. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to show up in this. You just happened to wear the right shirt at the, the right, right time, time and have the right race. That's basically an allegory for my life it's like right place right time if i just know it's like the right place and the right time oh my god but yeah like there's so much to talk about about this game well more like the aftermath like i mean there's four games five well, now five five now six if you count fnaf world six i mean fnaf world is like a spin-off in a way <laughs> Is it? <laughs> uh, because it's kind of tough. Like to my knowledge, it's kind of tied with the story. It's because tied it... into the story, yes. But as far as like the mechanics, it's like different. Yeah, it's a completely different tone, different mm -hmm. genre. Yeah. Now it's... that was a game that made a lot of people angry because it was actually like Scott's always criticized by releasing his games mm -hmm. too early. Yeah. But for this one, I think it was really released too early because uh -huh. like there was a bunch of buds, there was a bunch of features that were missing uh -huh. from. Any, uh, and you're talking about sister location, uh, FNAF World. FNAF World. Okay, I didn't really watch any so gameplay. So he had to get to take the game down and oh, really? then release it for free. Oh, I we didn't, didn't have to. He just wanted to. He didn't have to. Okay. But sister locations actually uh, was the most I've like been into the series in a while because of how mm -hmm. different it was. Yeah, it was. there was a, a lot of different mechanics into the game. Like you, there's a part where like you're hiding underneath a desk and you have to close a door. Yeah, and, and there's like voice acting. And there's voice acting. It's the most then... story driven I've ever seen the yeah, series. Yeah, and like each night is a different element. And uh, the fandom has been saying like this completely changes everything about yeah. like, what we know about the lore. Uh huh. And then like obviously MadPad is working on a theory on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, FNAF's ruining his life. Ruining. FNAF is actually FNAF made MadPad like. Popular you know how he's well. always joking, like, oh, this game's ruining my life. It is, honestly. Oh my gosh, like, when... I think that's how MatPat got really big on YouTube, because he made theories based on each of the FNAF games, and then he just got big after that, and, like, each of his theories... And, like, after each theory comes out, like, it's the previous theory was wrong, apparently. <laughs> Pretty much, although, yeah. uh... Scott did say that his FNAF 2 theory was like 90% correct. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder what that other 10% is. It's like he got everything mostly right. Yeah, mostly right, but there's some kinks <laughs> that you didn't really. Yeah, no, got some bugs get to work into. out. Right link. <laughs> right link. The whole little he Freddy here. Got like a little Freddy. I didn't get a Chica or a Bonnie. They only had like. Foxy. Like, that reminds me, like, the art of this game is actually, uh, the art that artists produce for this game is just mm -hmm. really good, too. I always, yeah, I really like it. Uh, the, the good part, not the, not the weird part. Not the weird part. Not the Tumblr part. Not the Tumblr fan fiction-y fan art. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attracted to a, a robot. We're not attracted to, like, sexy robots, check sexy birds with cakes. <laughs> Let me tell you, they some of those artists draw Chica way yet like sexier than they should. I know that's kind of weird. I'm like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so what else were we gonna talk about? <laughs> I just like lost track because like we didn't even get into the we don't, games itself. <laughs> we don't. We lost track because of like animal, like robotic animal Robot porn. Robotic animal porn. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um... We can talk about how the game changed, changed like YouTube Let's Plays. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's yeah, a... because I, I think it, it changed horror games as well. Yeah, I did. Because up until like like when FNAF was coming out, mm -hmm. before FNAF, it was all like Slender clones and mm -hmm. Amnesia clones. Mm -hmm. But this is a game that really like shook up what people know about horror games and like the possibility of them. Uh huh. And then like the elements of like random like really loud jump scares. Like it's, it's a like... it's a game that nobody's like thought of before. Yeah. 
And it's influenced a lot of games because, like, there's a bunch of, like, FNAF-inspired games coming out, like, Five Nights at Candy's, Those Nights mm-hmm. at Rachel's, uh, The um, Joy of Creation, the just joy to name of creation. a few. And then there's, like, spinoff ones based on, like, Spongebob <laughs> and Mickey. Uh, and, like... <laughs> My favorite one is uh, Five Nights at Wario's. Or there's also Five Nights at Fuck Boys. <laughs> that one was that, 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 that's really interesting, actually. <laughs> five Nights at Wario's, Five Nights at Fuck Boys, and... Well, Five Nights at Fuck Boys is not scary per se. It's just it's, a it's meme. Just funny. It's just a funny game. It's a meme lord game. It's a meme lord game because the the gameplay is exactly like Earthbound, right? Uh, it's a it's like kind of a turn based RPG kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But you know, yeah. Wait, what, what's your favorite FNAF game? My favorite FNAF game is number four because it brings a different element to the previous three because you're a little boy instead of a security guard and then like obviously there's a theory saying like oh this little boy has been haunted by a really bad bite the bite of 84 or bite of 87 oh, well the bite of 87 i think it was i think it's the bite of 87 and <laughs> then like he's been haunted by it and like it's basically a nightmare and people are saying like he's really in a hospital but in his nightmare he's in his room so like it really it really brings up this very scary mechanic because not only are there two doors side by side there's also something behind you and you have to also go to the closet so and those, not, very, and those like, animatronics are terrifying it, yeah those animatronics are so scary like when i was watching markiplier play it i was like no 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 i put like every time i watch markiplier play i have this Plushy, and I'm just like, no, 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 okay, jump scare, no, (laughs) not so. That's what I was dealing with. (laughs) Well, in my opinion, I think the one that I liked the most is the first one. Just Mm -hmm. it might be kind of like nostalgia, it was like brand new at the time, Mm -hmm. but I don't know, it's just something about like how claustrophobic it was, and how like, like the unknown factor of it uh-huh. but I had no idea what I was getting into it actually it scared me yeah it really did oh really uh I really liked number one too just because it was like the original one and like you're only dealing with so much at the same time but then when number two came out it just like changed up everything again it's like there's no doors and you're dealing with a vent and you're dealing with like three extra they took, extra away, they took away your security blankets yeah basically like you're just like you have to like flash a flashlight like a few times just to like get the people in front of you away, <laughs> like <laughs> away, get away. <laughs> just get out, get out of here. Just go, just get go out back here. out the door from where you came. <laughs> yeah, we don't want any of that. Mm-hmm. And then three was just you're dealing with one animatronic, but you're dealing with nightmares and. Like, there, there was just so much going on. Like, there was two layers to the map. There was the whole maintenance panel thing. Uh huh. And then... You got the spring lot suits. Yeah, and that's, like, when people were theorizing, like, oh, this is the purple guy in the spring spring trap suit. And then there's so much else deeper in that game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, uh, we want to know, what do you think what, about this whole FNAF craze? You know, what do you think, what, what game's your favorite, uh... Like, what's your, what's your opinion on the fandom, any of that? Uh, leave it down below. Leave it down Why don't below. you Did, leave it down right there? Also, let us know if you actually played the game or if you watched a YouTuber play it. And I feel like, <laughs> like most most people watch someone For, play it, but yeah, it's probably at this point. Well. Yeah, I would rather watch someone play it rather yeah. than I mean, I'm, I'm experiencing not doing, it by myself. Like, I've only played the first game. Oh, really? Because I'm, only, I'm, mm-hmm. like, I'm really sensitive to jump stairs. Oh, really? Like, really sensitive. Oh, yeah, I saw your live stream. Uh, don't, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about my <laughs> my Outlast 2 experience. But we're not. But uh, anyways, uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, give Joel a nice uh, a nice Hello. follow on Twitter. Give him a nice follow. follow give him a nice subscribe. Subscribe, and we're gonna do something on my channel, or we are gonna do a live stream. It doesn't matter. One of those two. <laughs> and we also like to welcome you to the new and improved. Yeah, set that Jake out. did not get to experience. Yeah, I was the first one to like record a pixel talk in this new setup. I'm really happy about it. Like, look at all this. Look at all this nerd. <laughs> There's so much nerd There's going so on. There's so much nerd. And like, Steve, especially Steve Urkel, he's the most nerd. Look at that. Moist. It says moist if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it was in the other set, but... But yeah, thanks guys for checking out this little video. We really appreciate you watching. Keep the discussion going down below. And we will see you on the next Pixel Talk.
Later.